Civil engineering is not for everyone. We have to work with dodgy tradesmen and go out for site inspections on 40 degree days. We have to come up with designs that work for crazy architectural ideas and we constantly have to be in a rush so we can meet strict client deadlines. But the worst part is, is that we aren't even the highest paid engineering major. Now, these are just some of the things I'm going to be covering in this video because today I'm going to be going over five reasons why you should not major in civil engineering. But before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Ben and I'm a structural engineer working and living in Australia. And on this channel, I share all things civil and structural engineering. So if you like this sort of content, consider subscribing. All right. So reason number one is that civil engineering is a deadline based industry. What I mean by this is that just like you university where you're constantly moving from one assignment to the next, you're constantly going to be moving from one project to another. But unlike university where you finish your assignment, you hand it in and then that's the end of it, when you finish the design phase of a project and send those drawings out, that's only really the beginning. Once things get started on the construction site, you'll have to attend site inspections and write reports, you'll have to answer phone calls from builders and contractors, and when things go wrong or are built differently on site, you'll even have to do more design work. Now depending on the size of the project and how long the whole building process takes, this might only last a few weeks, but for big projects like multi-story buildings or warehouses, this process can last for months and even years. Although the real kicker in all of this is that after you finish the design work on one project, you suddenly have nothing to do. So naturally you move on and smash out the design work for another one, two, three, or maybe even four projects before that first project moves to construction. But now seeing that you've done the design work on all of these other projects and have them all on the go too. Once construction kicks off on any of your earlier projects, you can very quickly see how you can end up with a lot on your plate. Majority of civil engineering companies that do design work make most of their money from the design fees and not things like construction services, which include things like site inspections and reviews. So this is why when you finish one project, you just move straight onto the next, because the more projects you can finish the design work for, the more money the company can make. Now, as an employee, what this really translates to is just being able to manage quite a lot of different things all happening at once, but my main point here is that civil engineering is very much just a volume based industry, so you've got to be comfortable with the fact that things are going to be done fast and you've got to be able to juggle a lot of different things. Alright, and reason number two is that you're constantly facing the unknown. What I mean by this is that especially in those first couple of years, there's a lot of learning to be done and the work can be really challenging. Obviously as you get more experience, every little thing stops being such a struggle, but often what does happen is that because you are making this progress and you're not only able to handle more work but more complex work the type of work you do changes and so does the volume so the challenge starts all over again for example when you first start out you're going to be doing small tasks on other engineers projects like site wind speed calculations and simple steel beam designs after you've proven you can do this, you might start getting your own small projects like a carport or a small shade structure. Next, once you've mastered this, you could start doing your own residential houses. And then further down the track, you can do things like warehouses and multi-story buildings. Now, obviously this progression doesn't happen overnight and will slowly happen over many years. But in order for this growth to actually happen, you've got to be committed to solving problem after problem for almost your entire career. So personally, I think if you don't like the idea of working in a challenging work environment, maybe engineering just isn't for you because a lot of what we do is just solving problems but in saying that there definitely are some roles out there that aren't as demanding as others so you could probably make it work if you really wanted to. In my opinion design roles are probably the jobs that are the most challenging technically so if the idea of ongoing study and practice isn't something you're interested in I'd probably avoid these types of roles. Okay and number three is things are always changing. Time and time again either the architect, the client or the builder decide they want to change something and then depending on the size and the nature of the change, many hours of work can become completely pointless or many hours of work can be added. For example, some of these changes can be things like changes to the floor plan or changes to the overall geometry of the structure or even the materials wanting to be used. When changes come during the design phase and if they're big enough, sometimes they can warrant a redesign fee to be charged which will buy us more time to get the work done. But when they come during the construction phase, often they're urgent and we just have to deal with whatever was done on site. For example, say during the design phase of a house, the architect decides to change the roof shape from a flat ceiling with roof trusses to a rake ceiling that'll have a ridge beam and two king posts. 
this is considered a big change and will warrant a redesign fee. On the other hand, say that you go out for the site inspection of this rake ceiling and the builder has decided to use a different size of timber and grade than the one you've specified, later on you'll have to go back to the office and double check that the size and grade of timber that they've used will actually be okay, and more often than not, there's no charge to the builder for doing this. In either of these cases, it can be pretty frustrating when you've already spent time and tried to make your design work for the plans that they told you were finalized, and then all of a sudden the architect just issues a new set of drawings, or when you get to site, the builder has just done something completely different, and they've both just ignored all the work you've already put in. As a structural engineer, this is definitely something you're going to have to get used to because these changes can come through all the time, and sometimes when they do, they can be so big that they blow out your entire week, so when it does happen, you do need to be efficient at managing your time, and not get stressed when the extra work piles on. Alright, and reason number 4 is that salaries in civil engineering are typically lower than other engineering majors. From my knowledge, and generally speaking, electrical and software engineering tend to make the most, and then mechanical engineering is next, and civil is below these three. Now, by no means am I saying that civil engineers make bad money, because we definitely don't. We do still typically earn more than the average wage, but in comparison to other engineering majors, it's not as good. In saying this though, civil engineers do typically have a pretty good work-life balance and don't have to work super long hours. There always seems to be stories about engineers who work in the tech industry in places like Silicon Valley in America, and these engineers seem to be doing like 16 hour days, and as a civil engineer, you'll never have to do this. Although some site engineering roles do require you to do more demanding hours, but typically these these roles are also higher paid. In terms of which civil engineering subspecialty gets the best pay, it's typically those roles that are either on site in some sort of construction management type role, or those that work in the mining industry. So if money is something that you want to prioritize early in your career and you don't want to be working on site or living and working in the mines, I don't think civil engineering is the best option. In civil engineering, those bigger salaries only really come later on in your career, so if you can be patient and build up your skills over time, you still can end up making hundreds of thousands of dollars working in the civil engineering field. Alright, and reason number five is the culture. Civil engineering is a service-based industry, and like any service-based industry, the lowest price always wins. So this means that every company is basically just outbidding one another and slightly trying to lower their fees so they can win the work and ultimately make money. And why this is a problem is because unlike a product-based business where there is a set price and people will pay more for things like quality and a brand name, in a service-based business, it's all about getting the work done for as cheap as you can. And what this means is that because the margins are so small on each of our projects, you don't actually get a lot of time to actually work on the project, as the only way the company keeps making money is for you to move on to the next project. So as a civil engineer, this means that you're going to be quite busy, and you're going to have to be able to juggle multiple projects at once. The funny thing in all this is that clients want engineering that is cheap, fast and economical, but realistically, you can only have two of these at a time. If you want the design to be cheap and fast, it's not going to be economical. If you want the design to be fast and economical, it's not going to be cheap. And finally, if you want the design to be cheap and economical, it's not going to be fast. Time and time again, you're going to have architects, clients and builders wanting all three of these things, and having to delicately explain this is something you're going to have to get good at. Anyways, I hope that you learned something from this video, and if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I take you through a full day in my life as a structural engineer, or that video there where I take you through how I would learn structural engineering if I were to start over. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.